Welcome to our webinar. I'm very happy about that. I hope you will learn a lot today. <laughs> okay. Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar of CCM and Trenalysis with the topic Market Trends of Sugar and Sweeteners in China 2016. I am Patrick for Marketing and I am very happy to guide you to this webinar. All the information of this webinar is provided by CCM and Trenalysis. Many factors are affecting the sugar and sweetener market in China recently. Environmental health policies are limiting the production of sweeteners in China. Also, a pollutant discharge licensing system is being implemented, which will without any doubt influence the sweeteners industry in China once more. The financial performance of Chinese sugar manufacturers varied greatly in Q3, resulting of increasing production costs, rising sugar price, and decreasing sales volume. In 2015 and 16, the planting area of sugarcane in China decreased, leading to a shortage of sugar, which is the main reason for the current high prices. So, a lot is happening in China's sweeteners industry nowadays. That's why today, DCM and analysis give you the chance to get some insights in this market trend, to keep you up to date. CCM is a market intelligence provider about China's sweetener industry, while Trenalysis gathers and analyzes trade information from manufacturers to the buyer. The agenda of this webinar is the following one. First, I will give you insights in the overall market situation of sugar and sweeteners in China. Furthermore, some information about the current pollution measurements and production reductions I'll explain. Then I give you information about some enterprises' performance in Q3 2016. Finally, the export trend of two important sweeteners 2016 in China will be revealed. So let's start with the market situation of sweeteners in China. First, we have a look at the export price of some sweeteners in China from November 2016. It shows that the overall development for most of the products didn't change very much compared to October. Only Manitoul experienced an outstanding increase of 16.52%. During the last year, the planting area of sugarcane did decrease. This causes a higher purchase cost for the sugar producers due to shorter supply. Additionally, some heavy rain during that time also reduced the quality of sugarcane, increasing the cost of sugar manufacturing once more. The increasing costs even exceeded the increasing prices of sugar, which actually lead to losses for many manufacturers, according to CCM's analysis. Downstream users search for substitutes for the more expensive sugar in China also led to a decline sales volume. CCM furthermore predicts that the sugar price will continue rising in China. The reasons are a depreciating RMB, limited growth of the sugar output in 2016 and 17, as well as expected <coughs> decreased imports. However, the price rise will be limited due to the launch of the national sugar reserves, the new production of sugar in the coming period, and more substitutes for sugar. So let's have a deeper look at the sugar market in China. It is expected that 56.65 million tons of sugarcane and about 5.7 to 5.9 million tons of white sugar will be produced in China in the season 2016-2017. The new import tariff of sugar is deciding how the sugar price will exactly develop. For an increased tariff with expected growth, the sugar price will stay high in China due to tight, to tight sugar supply. But new supply and substitutes will keep this pricing limited. For an increased tariff but a slow growth, fluctuations in prices are possible with higher price than the world market. For the unlikely case the tariffs are not raised, sugar prices would fall. The inventory in China is historically low with an amount of 203,700 tons in October 2016. The purchase price of sugar in three different main regions in China show the development of increasing prices. Globally analyzed, the sugar shortage is going to reach 
6.2 <laughs> million tons 2016-17, what would represent a record high. This is mainly due to Brazil's peak extraction period at the moment. As a result, after losses in the last three years, sugar makers in China are going to make profits in this season. CCM believes that this trend will go on for the season 16-17. Then have a look at market dynamics of sucralose. Sucralose experienced an increase of over 100% in 2016, mostly caused by short supply because of environmental protection and the resulting price rise. It is expected that manufacturers grow their production to balance the short supply, which will shrink prices once again. The case of JK Sucralose's production suspension demonstrates the short supply situation of sucralose in China 2016. It even led to a lack in inventory for many companies. The company had to reduce production because of the order from the Environmental Protection Bureau of Jiangsu Province, stating that the wastewater treatment of the facility didn't meet the standards. JK Sucralose is the largest sucralose manufacturer in China and the second biggest in the world, with a capacity of 2,000 tons per year. So, the suspension of this production had a huge impact on the supply situation in China. The reduction affected about 40% of production, which makes the producer still larger than its competitors' production. According to CCM, the x works price of sucralose was 86,912 US dollar per ton in November 2016. That's just a 1.28% rise month on month, but more than 100% compared to January 2016. The fastest growth took place in June with a 56.25% increase alone. Since sucralose is made of sugar, the increasing sugar price is affecting the sucralose price immensely. According to sucralose manufacturers, a further price rise of sucralose is very likely if the sugar price keeps rising as well. Sucralose manufacturers are going to extend their production of their product in the future to balance out the short supply and make more profits out of this more profitable product. After looking at some market trends, let's have a look at the environmental protection measurements that are affecting the price of sweeteners decisively in China. Since January 2015, when the new environmental protection law of the People's Republic of China was implemented officially, the government had increased focus on environmental pollution. In February 2015, the Water Pollution Prevention and Control Action Plan was issued. June 2016, the Ministry of Environmental Protection of the People's Republic of China solicited public opinions on the water pollution prevention and control law of the People's Republic of China. In November 2016, the State Council issued the proposal to control pollution discharge licensing. And in January 2018, the first environmental protection tax law in China will come to effect. All of this forced and will force sweetener manufacturers to limit or suspend production. In July 2016, JK Sucralose was ordered to suspend production for its substandard discharge of wastewater. Though it resumed production at the end of September, the output was small. Notably, many enterprises were not operating at full capacity, according to CCM's research. Environmental pressure takes place in many sweetener in industries in China. CCM has surveyed some manufacturers to get insight into the effects on their industries. First, sucralose. As mentioned before, sucralose suffered a production reduction mainly based on the order to take a sucralose. But also other producers, like Anhui Chenhe, are affected by stricter laws and have to make big investments in waste discharge solutions. The treatment of wastewater from the production of sucralose needs large quantity of funding and specific equipment in general. Also, besides the big investments, most of the producers cannot use their full production capacity due to the environmental issues. 
Currently, Shandong Tanbo Biochemical is the biggest supplier of sucralose with a capacity of around 4,000 tons per year. Natural sweeteners. The natural sweeteners like steviocytes, mucosides, and glycerin also affected by production restrictions of the Chinese government. The high industry sweeteners in China are suffering low profits currently, also affected by the environmental policy. Especially small manufacturers have even cut their whole production because they are not able to afford the equipment for the required wastewater treatment. The environmental pollution effort also includes the enlargement of so-called pollutant discharge licenses, which will likely have a negative effect on Chinese sweetener producers. The measurements come into action because the quality of air and water in many regions have not achieved the standard value for a long time. The main idea of controlling the pollutant discharge are discharge licenses that requires mainly manufacturers with pollutant emissions to be licensed until 2020. The goal of the licenses is to reduce and cut pollution, which will help to achieve the standard value of quality for many regions again. The new system is supposed to clear out past vagueness and will be supervised more strictly. CCM has listed the key measures from the proposal of the November 21st and 2016. First of all, the system changes from an administrative area pollutant discharge system to a certain organization affecting one. The applications for licensing should uh, be done before the actual project construction, which serves as a reference for the planned regular environmental checks. It also allows authorities to monitor pollution in advance. The management of the licensing management requires a catalog created by the Environmental Protection Department about the pollutant discharge. This will be accordingly changed to the different type of industries and their impact on the environment. The organizations can then apply for the license by stating their pollution, variety, amounts and concentration. The governmental departments are requested to do inspections more frequently according to the pollution emission of companies and get the right to punish blunder with production limitation, suspension and shutdown. On the other side, the licensing system encourages organizations to give themselves stricter pollution limits, which can be regarded by preferential electricity prices and governmental preference. This newly implemented license will be the only permission for organizations to emit any pollution. Every other method will be illegal. The licenses will be granted for three years in the first place and five more years after every renewal. According to CCM, the sweetener industry may be impacted too, looking at high pollution manufacturers, especially in the high intensity sweetener business. These include, for example, the production of sucralose. Looking at the small enterprises who cannot afford the treatment equipment necessary for the license and bigger manufacturers, with their production likely being reduced, the whole output of the sweetener industry in China may decrease the next years notably. That brings us to the financial performance of China's sugar manufacturers because they had large varieties in Q3 2016. It was mainly resulting of increasing production costs, rising sugar prices and the decreasing sales volume. The big winner was COFCO Tunhe with a sales increase of 49.54% year on year and a net profit increase of remarkable 142.86% year on year. The reasons for the big success, according to the company itself, was the rebounded sugar price. Other companies like Nanning Sugar and Guangxi Guitang, on the other hand, did write down losses in 463.55% and 108.51% year on year, respectively. They are explained by high costs and decreased gross profit margin. The supply and demand in sugar, <coughs> of sugar. According to CCM, the number of sugar plants in operation 
as well as the daily extraction capacity are more in this season compared to the season last year. Therefore, the sugar output is likely to grow again due to increasing sugarcane supply and an enlarged planting area. The Ministry of Agriculture in China stated a growth of sugar output of 1.2 million tons up to 9.9 million tons in December already. Anyway, the worldwide sugar shortage of estimated 2.63 billion tons in 2016-17 also has its impact on China, leading to decreased imports to China at about 3.5 million tons. Looking at the consumption of 15 million tons and exports of 70,000 tons, China's sugar shortage may reach about 1.67 million tons in this year. And finally, we will have a look at the export information of two important sweeteners in China. So, sucralose had a total export quantity of more than 2 million kilograms in the year 2016 till October. The average unit price has been 44.66 US dollar per kilogram, which results in the total value of exports with over 98 million US dollars. The trend of total value furthermore went up during the year with a small drop in August. The top exporting enterprises of sucralose have been Jian Nutrient Technology, JK Sucralose and Shandong Kanbo Biochemical Technology. While Jian Nutrient was the first with some space to the second one regarding the export value, JK Sucralose and Shandong Kanbo had a very even export value. Together, the three leading enterprises were responsible for more than half of the whole exports in China from January to October 2016. The main destination country of Sucralo's exports was the USA with a total value of almost 29 million US dollars. Germany and the UK are on the next places with significantly lower imports. Looking at the share of these companies, it is obvious that the USA and Germany together imported more than half of sucralose from China. The share of the other countries is much more even though. At second, we took a look at erythritol. Erythritol export value had a slight fluctuation throughout the year with a large drop in October 2016. The total quantity was 8,880,152 kilograms with an average unit price of 2.49 US dollar per kilogram. The total value has been almost 22 million US dollars. The three main exporting enterprises in China for every toll have been San Yuan Biology, Baoling Bao Biology, and Chuchun Dongxiao. However, San Yuan and Baoling Bao have exported a much higher value than the third place, Chuchang. The share of the main two enterprises almost is 75% of the total export, while the other companies did not show any greater appearance in share. The biggest importing countries of every retail from China in 2016 till October have been uh, countries that we've already seen in the top for other sweetener products, namely the USA, Germany, and also Japan. The import value of the sweetener is more balanced between several companies, but the USA is still top importer with quite a big range to next Germany. <coughs> Again, the three main importers are responsible for about two-thirds of the total export value. <coughs> okay. For a deeper trade analysis of any sweetener products in China, please feel free to contact Trenalysis for a consult or even a customized report. That leads us to the end of this webinar. Thank you very much for attending. This webinar was enabled by the information and analysis of CCM and Trenalysis, two brands of Ksonda. I hope we will see you soon on our platforms using the information and tools for your own detailed research in the sweetener and sugar industry in China. If you still have questions left, please feel free to write them down in the chat box. 
We will gather all the questions and will be happy to answer them per email to you soon. Thank you all for attending this webinar and have a very nice day.